Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how a 2011 iMac 27-inch um, performs in 2018 and 2019 with some slight modifications. So if you're thinking about buying a 2011 today, uh, 2000, in 2018 or 2019, since we're just around the corner, 2019 is coming up here, um, I'm going to show you it doesn't make sense and are you going to get the performance that you really want. Okay, so I purchased my 2011 iMac from a company called iSell iMacs. It doesn't have to be from them from the start, it really doesn't. I purchased it from them because I got you know, a tip from another online person and I kind of waited. They have auctions on eBay and a lot of the systems that I looked through were a lot more expensive than the one I purchased. Um, the one I got was actually supposed to be a grade C. I got super lucky when they shipped it because it's probably a grade B. Um, the screens have no blemishes on them. There is no, nothing on the metal except a, a few little teeny little scratches. So what you're going to get is probably going to vary. Here's just a quick example of what mine look like. It's basically pretty much flawless except for a few scratches like I said. Do you need something this perfect? No, it's the internals that count. But if you want to get something just to put out and have it look nice, you want to make sure it's probably a grade B or so. But I got mine for $295, and I did do some modifications with it, which I'll go through in a second. But needless to say, when it did ship, um, my first impression was it was pretty slow. So I got got the thing back, I, I turned it on, and I, you know, I was looking to see if I could run programs and just iMovie and some basic things like that. What I found was a really slow system. It does ship with a, either a 5400 or a 7200 RPM spinning drive. So the first thing I did though is I, I, I really wanted to upgrade the hard drive speed without opening up the system. I feel like if you open up the system, you can get into a, a huge mess. Uh, plus it takes a lot longer uh, time to actually do that. So I actually just went the easy route and I'll have a description. I have a video of how I did this, but I purchased a Thunderbolt connected external drive through Lacey. Or I think it's a French name. I don't know if I'm, I'm actually saying that correct. But it's a Thunderbolt 10 gigabit per second connection. It's actually a Lacey uh, Rugged Thunderbolt USB-C external hard drive, model number STFS2800. And you can pick them up for about $70 on eBay. I actually put, took out the drive in that. I put an SSD in there which is an Evo, Samsung Evo drive, and then I'm running the OS, I installed the OS basically onto the SSD externally. I did that in about 30 minutes, and I booted the system back up, and now the system is, is incredibly fast. Uh, I can do tons of uh, multitasking on it. I can do iMovie, which is really all I've tested right now. I haven't done Final Cut Pro. Uh, I can do basically anything that any newer system can do with it, and it's surprisingly fast. In fact, I'm actually pretty shocked. I did a side-by-side -side comparison with some of my laptops that I have, and I, I have to say that my laptops actually from the newer era of Windows um, are actually slower. So it's a, it's a great system and, and a great system just to fool around with for under 300 bucks. Granted, I did spend about 135 bucks on the actual SSD and the external drive, and I'll get into that in a little, in a little bit just to show you kind of how I did that. The iMac does come with a 1440p screen, 27 inch, so you got a lot of screen there, a lot of pixels in the move, and it does perform surprisingly well once I upgraded to the SSD. So I'll show you in a couple minutes here, just running some basic tasks like opening up Windows, browsers, you know, browsing the internet, uh, iMovie, and um, you know, what else can we do? Pages and things like that. I can kind of show you how it performs. Realistically though, it's gonna be very quick for general tasks. So. I can it do 4K, I'm going to test that soon, but I don't know for sure. Um, right now I'm doing 1080p, I'm actually doing this video on this exact same system, so we'll see how this performs, and we'll check back soon. The first thing I want to test is the boot time. Keep in mind that the old drive, uh, when the spinning drive, when I try to reboot the system up, would take about a minute and a half. With the SSD and the Thunderbolt connection um, and running the OS externally, you can see that it's a much quicker process. It's about 20 seconds, maybe somewhere in that range, to boot up. So it's it's you know 10 times, eight to 10 times faster than it would be in the spinning drive. So a huge difference when you actually add that drive to the system, and it's something that I recommend for sure to make a difference. All right, here we're going to do some other tests, just some basic tasks like opening up browsers and seeing how fast the computer is generally with this new setup. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Chrome here. I use Chrome more than I use Safari, so I'll show you both, though. 
Chrome, you know, pretty much opens very quickly, uh, one to two seconds. And here goes uh, YouTube. You can see YouTube loads very quickly. Obviously, your internet connection may have a little bit to do with it, but it does scroll and load videos and things like that very quickly. So um, let me go ahead and try a different website, ESPN. We can go ahead and open that up as well. As you can see, once I double click on it, it takes, you know, one to two seconds to open up the browser. Very, very quick. Everything loads quickly and the scrolling and everything like that is very, very, very quick. So something that just obviously when you're buying this system, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to run into issues with opening up websites and just, just general stuff like that. Here is another one. Finally, it's in telecast. It's a, a weather site. Again, loads very quick. Um, you can't get much quicker than this when you're dealing with other setups. So just something to think about. It's, it's very fast with the SSD. And here's an example if you're a Safari user. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on this here in a second. You can see how quick it loads. One skip there with the, the icon and it opens up within one second. Here's uh, Google opening up as well. It's very quick. So Safari is just as quick as Chrome, just to show you that. And, you know, I, I don't use Safari as much, but I know a lot of people do. So if you do use it, don't worry about it. It's going to be fast there as well. Let's go ahead and try a couple different things here. One thing we can open up is iMovie. If you watch the, the bouncing icon again, it only does maybe one or two times and it opens up everything. Sorry about the shadows here. I'm kind of filming at a weird time of the day, so I'm going to try to move the camera so you can see a little bit better here. Inside iMovie, this is the actual movie that we're actually talking about right now. You, you can see the, the scrubbing effect here. It's very quick. Uh, there's no really stuttering or anything like that. So this is a 1080p video that I'm editing. No problems whatsoever with it. You know, rendering times are fairly quick. Not going to be as quick as the newer CPUs, but they're fairly quick. So you can see that that's going to be a system that you have no problem editing 1080p videos on. Um, again, make sure you get the SSD, though, for sure. <clears throat> so a couple other things we can do here is let's go ahead and open up the, um, the launch pad. I want to show you how fast the disk is now that I replaced it with that Lacey Thunderbolt connection. We'll go ahead and just run a test on the, the main system here. I've done this many times and it's going to be very consistent. You're always going to get about 350 megabits per second with the disk uh, write speed. And it should be around 380, 385 for the reads. And, you know, I've done about five or ten different tests on this and it's always very consistent. So when you do deal with something like this and you install that SSD, you're going to get speeds very similar to this. Just make sure you use a Samsung Evo. Um, I use the 240 gig to get similar results. I know different disks might give you slightly different results. Okay, we'll try a few different things. A couple more tests here to show you the speed of the system. A lot of people use Keynote. Here's an example for Keynote. It opens up in one second again, and I can open up a project very quickly as well. So that's that's not a problem on this system. I've actually done some stuff in there as well, and it works really well with the rendering. Here's Pages, another popular program. These are just obviously the popular programs people use. Uh, one to two seconds to load, and you can open up projects very quickly. No lag, no, no stuttering at all. Um, one other thing that people use a lot of is maybe Photos. I have a ton of photos saved on here from a wedding, and if I click that open, you can see that they load very quickly, and they don't sit there and take you know 10 minutes to load all these photos. You can scroll through them very quickly, open them up, and everything looks really good on this great screen. So, photos is something that uh, you know it's it can hurt you sometimes if you have to wait there for 10 minutes while photos load in. So that's a huge difference when you get the SSD in this type of a system. So is it worth it in 2018, 2019 to purchase a 2011 iMac? I would say yes. If you get the 27 inch, just the screen alone for the 1440p is basically an incredible screen. You're gonna probably spend more than $300 on that screen no matter where you buy it from. So that's the first thing. So if you're gonna get that screen, I'd say yes for sure. Um, the second thing is if you do upgrade it to the SSD like I did and run the OS off of that, you are definitely going to get a really high performing machine for the cost, uh, you know, when it comes to iMacs uh, or Macintosh, you know, for that Apple for that matter. So um, is it worth it? I would say definitely, but you have to find that right deal. If it was, if it would have cost me four fifty five hundred plus, I had to add the drives, would I, is it worth it? No. Um, so you really have to sit there and fool around for a little while, find your price point, and then you can kind of go from there. But realistically, is it worth it? I say totally. If you like to fool around and dabble in this kind of stuff, I do videos obviously, so I wanted to buy it for that. But I'm going to show you that I can do this um, video from this exact system, and I and, and basically everything will scrub pretty pretty flawlessly. There's very little uh, buffering or anything like that with this system, so um, it's a very good system.